fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's trouble on the trail ahead. The courtroom was packed with townsmen who came to hear Cyrus Hawkins sentenced. The hum of excited voices rose and fell on the warm air, and the atmosphere was charged with tense expectancy. Movement stirred in the crowded doorway and in the tall open windows where latecomers sought entrance into the courtroom. The charge was murder. Witnesses who claimed to have seen the act committed made the verdict of guilty a certainty. But the pros and cons of a case still held the excited interest of the crowd. Then a sudden hush fell over the room as the judge made ready to address the prisoner and a gavel rapped for silence. The prisoner will stand. <clears throat> Cyrus Hawkins, you have been found guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. Have you anything to say before this court passes sentence? Just this. I'm no more guilty of murder than you are. I tell you, Judge, this whole thing's a frame-up. That's all that you have to say? It's not all I... I've got to say, not by a jugful. Every doggone one of those witnesses lied through his teeth. Well, look at me. I never so much as heard a grasshopper. Seth Halloway is to hang tomorrow. I know he's not guilty of murder any more than I am. The same witnesses that lied... The jury has found you guilty. The time for argument is past. You had your trial, and all that remains is for me to pass sentence. But, Judge, I it tell you... It is the sentence of this court that you be taken to the jail in the custody of the sheriff, and on the morning of the 14th, be hanged by the neck until dead. Well, listen to me. How come the same witnesses testify against everyone? Court is adjourned. Hold it. All oh, stay right where you are. There he is. There at the window. Nice man. You got two guns on us. What's this mean? Get him, fellow. Come this way. Stop it. You, Indian, take your hands off the prisoner. You see here, you. Keep out of the way, Sheriff. You might get hurt. The Redskins take inside at the window. Who is he? Who's hey, the master? Arrest them both, interfering with justice. Stop him. Go silver. <laughs> All that day, the townsmen discussed the trial and the amazing abduction of the condemned man. Then toward evening, the subject of conversation changed. Attention was focused on Seth Holloway, already tried and convicted of murder, who was sentenced to hang the following morning. Daybreak. 
Holloway slowly mounted the 13 steps of the scaffold. He had pleaded in vain, protesting his innocence against a string of men who claimed to be eyewitnesses to murder. On top of the platform, he saw a row of men who would officially witness his hanging. The sheriff was on hand with a deputy who would adjust the black hood over Seth's tired face. Innocent. I'm innocent. And they're to hang me. Near the sheriff stood the banker, a man named Steele, who was an official witness. If anything happens like yesterday, Sheriff, you'd better be ready to account for it. It won't. Still no sign of that masked man, huh? Nope, we're still hunting him and the redskin and Cy Hawkins. He won't interrupt this hanging? And by a darn sight. I've got guards posted all around. Good. Innocent. And they're to hang me. Holloway, this is it. You got any last words before we blindfold you? Sheriff, I... I know they ain't no use pleading now. But I hope someday, from where I'm going, to see those lying witnesses made to pay in full. Fix the blindfold. Not now. That voice. Who spoke? I did. Put on them goes. Up the prisoner's hands. It's the same man. You needn't look so closely, Banker Steele. My face isn't masked, but it is disguised. Hello, bring up the horses. Uh, here come. That same redskin. If I'll let Sheriff, you'll pay Jump, for this. Sir. Jump down and get on that white horse. I'll be right alongside. Now hurry. My chance for life. <coughs> Get up on Silver. Steady, Silver. <laughs> We're not going to get away with this. Keep your gun in leather. Like fun, I will. And I'll fix it so you can't use it. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Just count somewhere. Stop him. He's got another prisoner. Fire on them. Stop them. Call the posse. Fire Silver. Later in the day, Sheriff Carey defended himself weakly against the anger of Banker Steele, the wealthiest man in Lenape. The huge frame of the banker seemed to tower over the undersized lawman, and in his discomfiture, the sheriff seemed to shrink in his chair. The scene is the sheriff's office. I tell you, Steele, I did all I could. It ain't my fault the masked man rescued them, too. Shut up, you palavering weak kneed fool. I saw you give way to the masked man with my own eyes. You ain't got the spine of a jellyfish. I did my best. Your best ain't good enough. What do you mean? I put you in office, Kerry. I can put you out. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Kerry, I had you elected chair for one reason. To arrest the men I wanted out of the way. That's what I've been doing. I supplied you with the evidence to hang them. Evidence that convicted them. But you let them get away. It's that mask man, Steele. He shows up when you don't expect him. Handles them six guns of his like grease lightning. Who is he? I don't know. Find him, arrest him. I can't. I've had men hunting everywhere. Kerry, if you don't get that masked man, you're finished. What, I... You heard me. I don't know who he is, what he wants. But I get a sneaking suspicion. If I don't get him, he'll get me. If you'll just give me time. You had time. Sheriff Kerry, you wouldn't be thinking of double-crossing me, would you? Of course not, Mr. Steele. Any time you get tired of your job, there's jail waiting for you. Oh, Mr. Steele. I've got evidence to use against you the same as the others. You don't have to worry about me. No, I reckon not. But if you let that other prisoner escape, you had better worry about me. Oh, Jeff Harris? He's safe in jail. He won't get out. I'm not so sure. What do you mean? With that mask on Bray around, like it's not Jeff Harris will be rescued before he's hung. The other two wasn't taken till he was ready for the noose. Harris ain't even been tried yet. We won't take chances. What do you mean? How would it be if Harris was to commit suicide in his cell? Suicide? Folks would figure he had a guilty conscience. Mm. How? It could be made to look like he hanged himself in his cell by his belt. It could be done. Tonight, after he's asleep. Will you be here? Of course not. Well, I'll need help. That's right. And I don't trust them deputies. I'll send over a couple of my own men to help you. (laughs) This will be one hanging the masked man won't know about. Late that night... Three figures crept stealthily toward the cell where Jeff Harris slept. 
They were the sheriff and two men whom Banker Steele had assigned to help him accomplish his murderous errand. Grim-featured, shrewd-eyed men who made their living by the knife and the gun and the rope. Slowly, carefully, they crept toward the unsuspecting youth. Quiet, you fool. Did it wake him? I don't know. He's still sleeping. Come on, Gary. Now watch your step, Jude. The mask man. What's going on here? These men came here to hang you, Jeff. I, I don't understand. You come. Don't let him take the prisoner, boys. Rush him. You handle the mask, come me, Sheriff. We'll jump the engine. As the two grim-faced men leaped into Jeff's cell to intercept Tonto in his attempt to free the youth, the sheriff lunged at the lone ranger. Quickly, the masked man returned his guns to their holsters and met the sheriff's attack with his fists. No, you don't. I'll get you. Yes. <coughs> and take this, too. Fists flailed but briefly as the lone ranger countered the sheriff's charge with an expertly timed, excellently aimed blow, then floored him with a smash to the jaw. Meanwhile, in Jeff's cell, Tonto was more than holding his own against the two men who had attacked him. You take this. You only risk and I'll get you for cracking my part. No, you won't. As the second man leaped at the Indian to revenge his partner, he was suddenly intercepted by a tall figure who wore a black mask. Parrying the man's blow, the Lone Ranger put the complete force of his muscular shoulders behind a punch and sent his opponent reeling against the wall, then crashing to the floor. <laughs> we finish plenty fast. Come on, Jeff. Where are you taking me? Where you'll be safe. But I don't Hurry, understand. this way before they recover. Stop on my gun. It is. On my horse here. Up you come. But what's this? Up all? with you. Come on, Silver. Thundering in the night, the powerful horses carried the Lone Ranger, Jeff, and Tonto to a well-concealed camp in an arroyo not far from town. Hold Silver, hold my gun, hold my Easy. You'll be safe here, Jeff. Where are we? At my camp. That mask. Your outlaws. We're your friends, Jeff. Huh? Why did you break me out of jail? Those men were going to hang you and make it appear a suicide. But one of them was a sheriff. Yes, and the others were Banker Steele's gunmen. Banker Steele. Steele planned to convict you for murder. I didn't kill Hank James. The evidence against me was fake. Fake by Steele. He framed you just as he framed the others. You mean the, the two you saved from hanging? I heard about that. Why does Steele want you out of the way? I, I don't know. First time I met him was when I made a deposit at his bank. How much did you deposit? $7,000. My uncle back east left it to me in his will. Well, that's reason enough for Steele to want to kill you. Huh? Holloway and Hawkins also had large deposits in his bank. I don't savvy this at it's all. It's simple enough. The bank's big depositors were prevented from claiming their money. Steele could take over their deposits. But there was evidence against the others. Four men saw Holloway and Hawkins do murder. Those four men could have been paid to testify falsely. By... by Steele? Yes. Then there... There have been men at my trial to swear I shot Hank James? Yes, Jeff. But the sheriff, he sheriff knows... Sheriff works hand in glove with Steele. A low-down coyote. Now, listen to me, Jeff. You've got to risk your neck to establish your innocence. Huh? As matters stand, you're out of jail. But you'll always be a hunted man. I know. If you'll risk hanging to help me, we can expose Steele and Sheriff Carey. And you can return home unmolested. I'd be with my wife again. And I can count on you? You bet, mister. Good. Holloway and Hawkins said the same thing. That makes... Five of us. Yeah, five. Five against Steele and his whole rotten setup. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. A few days later, a stranger entered Steele's bank and walked to the teller's window. He was well but conservatively dressed, suggesting a man of means. And in his hand, he carried a small black bag. 
Setting the bag on the floor beside him, he withdrew from it a thick package of banknotes. Then presented the bills together with a slip at the teller's window. I want to make a deposit. Surely, surely, stranger. Uh, how much? Ten thousand dollars. Here's a slip I filled out. Ten thousand? That's a lot of cash. I'm planning to open a business here. Well, I'll have to get this approved by the boss. I'll be back in a minute. Mr. Seal. What do you want? The man here wants to make a deposit. Ten thousand dollars. How much? Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Who? Uh, here's the slip. Lane Brand. Shall I put the deposit through? Certainly put it through. What do I hire you for? Here, let me sign that paper. Uh, yes, sir. And here you are. Ten thousand. Mr. Steele. Some stranger is making a deposit, Carrie. $10,000. Yeah? And if I could count on you, I could clean up. Steel, I've done all a man can. You sure messed things up at the jail the other night. You and them dunderheads are told to help. It was that mask man again? I know it. And this time he turned Jeff Harris loose. That makes three escapes, Carrie. You don't have to worry, Steel. They won't show their faces in town again. They know they'd be arrested if they did. And you already took their bank deposits. Even so, if one of your prisoners escapes again... The next one won't get away, I'll promise you that. There won't be a next one, Carrie. Unless... Unless what? Unless we can frame the stranger that just came into the bank. Ten thousand dollars is a lot of money. Yes, but first we got to... Gunfire. Gave my side. Maybe we can see from this window. <laughs> it's a stranger. He's bending over an engine. Yes, and the engine's been shot. <laughs> Carrie, that 10,000 is as good as mine. What do you mean? We'll railroad the stranger to a hang noose so fast it'll make his head swim. Come on. Hurrying to the street, Sheriff Carey and Steele elbowed their way through the gathering crowd. Angry voices rose as the crowd saw the inert form of a grave-faced Indian dressed in buckskin on the ground and a stranger standing over him. Then before their anger could be expressed in action... The sheriff and banker Steele pushed their way into the center of the crowded circle. Let me through. Make way for the sheriff. Stranger, you're under arrest. What for? Murder. I didn't shoot this engine, Sheriff. He was standing over him. I ran to see if I could help him. Funny nobody else did. Nobody else was around. Sure, just you and the engine. So you shot him. Let me have your gun. I'll tell you, I found him there on the ground. <laughs> this engine's the one who helped free the murderers, Carrie. Well, Darn if he ain't. Name's Tano or something. Yeah. There's two bullet holes in this jacket. That settles it, stranger. What? There's two bullets missing from your gun. Well, that's a lie. I never... Search him, Steele. Like as not, you'll find the shells on him. Glad to oblige, Carrie. Now, see here. You better hold your tongue, mister. Anything you say can be used against you. I'll tell you I'm innocent. Well, we'll let the court decide that. Find anything, Steele? Just a piece of paper. Hey, give me that. That's my bank receipt. You're mistaken, mister. This is nothing but a scrap of paper. It's a receipt for money I deposited. Shut up. Didn't find any shells, huh, Steel? No, Carrie. I guess he's thrown away. Yeah. Well, that way there'd be less evidence. Well, we got enough to hang him already. You're framing me, both of you. Come on, Silver. What the? The mask, the man. Put your hands up. Carrie, if he takes this prisoner from me, you're through. Put down them guns. You're, you're obstructing justice. Obstructing justice? You should know all about that, Sheriff. You and Steve. Hey, you. What? Remember, Carrie, if he takes the prisoner, if you let him get I away. I'll come for the prisoner this time. Easy, big fella. Aim for my friend. Come on, Tano, I'll get you out of here. Now's your chance, Carrie. Jump in, quick. Watch yourself, Sheriff. Shoot him. Shoot your fool. Oh, I... Go ahead, Sheriff. Shoot me in the back. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Hey, you slow-moving Mosshorn. Confound you, Sheriff. You let him get away. <laughs> Carrying Tonto astride the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger raced back to the camp. When he arrived, the three fugitives he had saved from Sheriff Carey's justice were waiting. Oh, Silver, oh boy, fool. Oh. Easy. You did a perfect job, Tonto. Uh-huh. Them plenty fooled. How did it come out? What happened? Did it work? Everything went as planned. They were so anxious to arrest Brandt, they glanced at the bullet holes in Tonto's jacket and took it for granted that he was shot. Can you beat that? That proves the sheriff's a crook. I can't wait to get my hands on that coyote. Steal robbed Brandt of his bank receipt. The sheriff took mine. Mine, too. Those receipts was our only claim to have it cash in the bank. Now Steele's got them. He won't have them long. Them try to hang Brandt. Brandt won't have a chance at the trial. What'll we do? When the case comes up, 
We'll give Steele and the sheriff the biggest surprise of their lives. Grant's trial was set for the following afternoon at the insistence of Steele, who was anxious to claim Brant's $10,000 bank account as quickly as possible. Attracted by the unusual circumstances of the trial, a record crowd thronged the courtroom. A jury had been hastily summoned, and the witnesses, as was expected by the Lone Ranger, were picked by Steele. Brant heard first one man, then another, take the stand and swear to lies against him. And I uh, saw Brant pull his gun and shoot the redskin. That's all, Your Honor. Judge. Judge, that man lies. Brand? Brand, sit down. You're out of order. My gun wasn't even fired. Don't believe him, Judge. I found two bullets missing. Well, sure they were missing. You took them from a gun yourself. You know you did, Sheriff. It's a lie. It ain't a lie. It's heavens my witness. It's the truth. Everything those witnesses have said is a lie. A judge, you've got to believe me. These men are hanging me. With amazing speed, fake evidence was stacked against the man on trial. It was clear that Brant had no hope of escaping the hangman's rope. Outside, watching the trial through a window, was a small group of men. Holloway. Yeah? Are those witnesses the same men who testified against you? That's right. Me too. Reckon they'd have testified against me if you hadn't broken me out of jail first. I'd like to go in there and throw them lies right back in their faces. Yeah. When do we start? Not yet. Well, the jury's filing out. When they return with the verdict, Grant will have his say. But what good will it do? Wait and watch. Inside the courtroom, there was a low hum of excited voices, punctuated by moments of tense expectancy as faces looked at the clock on the wall, which seemed inexorably to tick away Brant's light. When the judge and the jury returned, the defendant's fate would be officially sealed, but in the minds of the people who sat there, the decision soon to be rendered was all too apparent. Already it called for the death penalty. Suddenly, the jury filed back into the room, their foreman holding tightly to the paper whose few simple words held Brant's life in the balance. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The defendant will stand and face the jury. The foreman will rise and read the verdict. We, the jury, in the case of the state versus Brandt, find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree as charged in the indictment. Your Honor. Has the defendant something to say? I want to address the court. Well, make it short. I've been guilty of killing a man who has not even been proved dead. Order! Order in the court! Order! What do you mean by that, Brandt? You heard the testimony of witnesses who examined the man and found him dead. I'll show you what I mean, Judge. My friends are taking over. What's that? All of you, stay seated. Won't anybody make a move? The mass man. Glory be. Kill it. Sheriff Kelly. There's Jeff Harris. What are you stiff listening? Order. Order in the court. Order. And you'll see more of the escaped prisoners. Holloway, Hawkins, bring in the Indian. We're coming. Here we come with the engine on a stretcher. There's the other two fugitives. Holloway and Hawkins. Arrest those men. Stay right where you are. Judge, what sort of a trial is this? Be quiet, Steele. Everyone be quiet. Give me that gavel. Now, Judge, ask the witnesses if this is the Indian Brant killed. Step up and answer the question. Is that Indian on the stretch of the one? Let me have a look. Yep, that's him. Sheriff, do you agree? Yeah, that's the Indian, all right. Steele, you take a look. Sure, it's him. What about it? Stand up, Tonto. Uh, me not dead. Me not even hurt. What? We've been framed. So many double cross. Order! Order in the court! Order! Quiet! Quiet! Judge, every one of the witnesses lied. That ain't so! Jeff, where was Collins when he said he saw Brant shoot? In the cafe, playing Pharaoh. Holloway, where was Carson? He was at the blacksmith's. Brown was there with him. And Baird was home in bed. <laughs> Judge! Judge! Those same witnesses testified against all of these men. They were paid to lie by Steele. He wanted our money. That ain't true. Am I right? Speak up or you'll be jailed for perjury. 
Maybe one of you can turn state's evidence. Steve paid us to lie. I'll tell about it. Well, let me tell him. Go straight to the house. I've been framed, I tell you. It's a frame-up, Steele, but you framed it. You faked murder evidence against three fugitives for the same reason you did me. To claim their bank deposits. Prove it. Branch, you prove it. You deny I deposited $10,000 in your bank? I do. All my depositors get a receipt for the money. I've got one, too, Steele. <laughs> You're bluffing, Brandt. You know, dog. The receipt you I... took from me was a copy, Steele. The real receipt is here. Signed with your name. Hey, what's that? I've heard enough. Steele, I'm appointing an honest lawman to investigate you and the sheriff right now. You needn't appoint anyone, Judge. The United States Marshal is here to take charge. Well, where is he? His name is. Brent. Steele, he's arresting you and the sheriff for murder. Murder? Murder the men you accused Holloway, Hawkins, and Harris of killing. That's a, that's a hanging charge. Yeah, but he's going to spring the trap on me. Put down that gun, Steele. Hey, move it up here. Leave it, you. Go ahead. Let you go. Good work, Toto. They won't need us now. Come on. Wait. Hold up there. Who, who are those men? That masked man. Masked man? Judge, he's the Lone Ranger. Glory be. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 